Halftones are a great method for adding retro effects to your artwork. Today we'll look at the halftone filter in Infinity Photo and see how it can be used to add some vintage flair to your designs. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent and today we're talking about the halftone filter in Affinity Photo. Now I'll be using the live filter version of this feature. If you're not familiar with live filters, be sure to check out my introduction video that I just posted on that subject. I should reiterate that this method is just for Affinity Photo. Currently these filters do not exist in Affinity Designer. But if you get a cool effect going in Affinity Photo, you can always export it as a graphic and bring it into your Affinity Designer project. So as I said, I'm going to be using the live filter version of the halftone here. So live filters are this button here, I'll click on it. And I can click halftone. So first you can see we have this screen option. So first we have the monochrome, which is going to be grayscale. Then we have color. So if I zoom in with color, you can see the colors are all going to be CYMK or RGB or black and white. There's a line option here. So you can see it's these lines. And there's also a circular option. Now let me go back to monochrome for the moment. We have this cell size option, which is going to be how big your dots are here. And this is something you want to play with depending on the image. A good size is going to depend on the resolution of your image. So you just kind of have to move it around and see what looks good. By the way, you can also click and drag on your image here to change the size. So that's another way to do it. Now the dot options here are going to be the shape of your dots. So the obvious one is round. These are all going to be various circles. Cosine will sometimes be round, but sometimes it's also kind of a diamond shape. If I zoom in here, you can see it's a little squarish there. It's going to depend on your image. Now contrast determines how sharp the effect is going to be. Let me zoom in and show you an extreme example of that. If I turn down contrast a lot, you can see it's just doing a subtle halftone over my original image. And as I increase it, it goes more and more towards the halftone. And when you get to 100%, it's pure black and white halftone here. So this is good if you actually want to threshold your image exactly between pure black and pure white. The screen angle option is going to be the angle that the dots are printed at. So again, let me zoom in. If I rotate this, you can see the lines are being printed in different directions. And by the way, by default, it makes 45 degree increments like this. But if you hold shift, you can do finer degree increments. You can also double click on it to do an exact amount. So 120. Now, if we do color mode, we have some other options here. So this gray component replacement is going to add some more black to our image to add a little bit more contrast. So again, let me zoom in really extreme here so you can see it. If I dial up this gray component replacement, you'll see these black dots appearing. So that's what that does. It can add a little bit different effect when you zoom out, it can make your image look a little darker. So it's kind of a style thing. And this under color removal option is going to remove some of the color. So it's going to make some of the colors smaller here. So as I turn it up, you can see it's reducing the color. So again, these two options are only effective when you're using the color screen mode. Now, something you can also do with any live filter, including the halftone, is mask it. So let me turn off the live filter for a second. I'll choose my selection brush tool and I'll select my subject here. And what I can do is I can create a mask by clicking the mask layer button. Now what I can do is I can turn my halftone back on and I can apply that mask to just the halftone. So this could be one effect. You could also invert the mask. So with the mask selected, I'll press control I. And now the area behind her is half toned. And of course, because it's all non-destructive, we can keep modifying it. So I can change the background there, make it look like something different. I could even change the color if I wanted to. A lot of interesting things that could go on here. So there's lots of interesting effects you can do with the non-destructive power of these tools. Now, something that will really affect how your halftones look are the values in your image, the levels of black and white. So let me add a halftone pattern to this here. Now I'll turn it off. I'll add a black and white adjustment to it. Let me move the halftone above it. So now you can see this is the halftone with the black and white filter on. If I turn the black and white off, it looks different. So that's something to really think about when you're doing your halftones. How do you want the levels of black and white to look? So I can also adjust the levels here. Let's do that with a adjustment layer. I'll turn up the blacks, brighten the whites. Let's remember to put my halftone above it. So let's turn the halftone back on. So let's adjust the levels again. You can see as I change the black level, my halftone is going to be changing. And of course, same thing with gamma and all of that. So if your halftone isn't looking that great, I recommend also looking at the levels, black and white adjustments, curves, anything that adjusts the values of your image. Now, something you may want to do when creating a halftone image is make one of the values transparent. For example, maybe you want your halftone to be pure black and white, and then you want that white to be fully transparent. So let's look at how we could do that. First, let me apply the halftone again here. Now, if I zoom in, 
You'll see we don't have full black and white here. We have some levels of gray for this anti-aliasing here. The way we can get around that is with the threshold adjustment. So let me add a threshold. That's an adjustment layer right here. And that's going to make our image pure black and white. Now, if I zoom out, where this cutoff is is going to affect our image slightly. But let's say we want it to be there. Let's just put it in the middle. And the threshold is above the truck here. But just to make it neat and tidy, I'll put it right here inside. Now, let's say I want to make the white fully transparent. Well, what I can do is I can use the blend options. I have a video about the blend options. So if you want to learn how that works, be sure to check it out. But what I'll do here is I'll put my truck in a group here. So I put this in a group to modify the blend options, just so it's affecting the final result of all these filters here. So let me do something first. Let me just put a green layer behind my image so we know when we have transparency. So if I correctly do the transparency, you'll be able to see the green behind it. So with my group selected, I'm going to click the blend options here. And like I said, I have a whole video on that, but essentially this is going to tell us what value ranges we can suppress in our layer. So let's say I want to get rid of all the whites. I'm going to dial down the whites here. I'm going to make it very sharp. And that reduces all the whites to zero. And all our blacks here on the left are still solid. And in the middle doesn't really matter because our image was only black and white to begin with. So if I toggle this green off, you can see we have transparency behind it there. Now maybe I want to make these black areas white so I can add an inversion adjustment. So I'll invert. I'll make sure it's up on top there. So now you can't really see it, but I have white here on a transparent background. Let me export this as a PNG and let's put it on a t-shirt and see how it looks. So I'll go to file, export, select PNG. I'll save it as van. So I'm here on Printify. Let's look at the catalog. Let's pick some popular shirt. I'll start designing. Let's choose a shirt that has some type of color on it, asphalt. I'll upload. And here we are. We can see our design with the transparency on it. Let's preview it. Not the best design ever, but you can see that we actually achieved transparency with a halftone pattern. Now, one other thing you may want to do is just make halftone assets that can be used in other designs. For example, let me draw a square here. And I can apply the halftone pattern to it. And you can see we have this pattern here. So this may be something you want to use for something else, a texture. And of course, if you go to the halftone options, you can adjust the cell size to make it look different. Now, it's going to change the density of the dots is the level of gray. So right now, I have this level of gray. And it's giving me this half tone. I'm going to change the slider here. If I make it darker, you can see the circles are much tighter. And if I make it lighter, you can see the circles are further apart. So it's a very nice way to quickly get these types of patterns. Now, you're not limited to solid grays either. You can do a gradient. So I'll make a gradient going this way. Make it pure black on one side, pure white on the other. And if I turn on my half tone pattern, I get a pattern like this. So again, this could be very useful if you're doing comic book styles or something of that nature. You can use the gradient options to change the distribution of how it goes. You can also make it a radial gradient. So let me center it in the middle here. I'll bring this in. Then I'll turn the halftone back on. So here we have this halftone circle. And I can reverse the gradient to make it go the other way. Again, if I select this black in the middle, if I change the color, I get all sorts of different distributions here. So it's a pretty handy tool for creating these halftone patterns. As I said, halftones are a type of live filter. If you want an introduction to live filters, be sure to check out my previous video on that subject. And of course, if you have any questions about this video, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.